Hello, hello. Today we are charging shocks, or in this case, we're charging my hydraulic bump stop. Same principle, it's a hydraulic nitrogen charged uh, shock or bump stop. If we were charging the shock, it would be the same concept we're doing here, uh, except with the shock, you want the shock fully um, uh, extended. So I would have the axle drooped and I would charge it that way. You don't want to charge it under load. Uh, this hydraulic bump stop is already fully extended, as you can see, so we can charge it in its sitting position. Um, so the what we're going to do basically is use the power tank system for nitrogen. Uh, I already did the other side. I, I had a feeling they were low and, and when I checked it, I was 50 PSI low on the on the passenger side. So I added the 50 to get it to 150, which is where it's supposed to be. I was at 100. Um, this side I know is low. I already checked it. Uh, I did a video before this and it didn't work. So I kind of am undoing it and redoing the video for you guys. So it, it is a little bit more coherent and makes sense. Um, but essentially we're going to put this, uh, chuck onto the valve here, the Schrader valve, and we will, um, hook up the nitrogen here. Once we get the nitrogen hooked up, we will use this, um, to decompress or compress, I should say, the Schrader valve in there, which will allow it to open up. It'll allow the nitrogen to travel through, uh, and it also give us a reading on how much nitrogen we have in the hydraulic bump. I know it's low, like I said, I hooked this up before and checked it um, so that I can make sure the video kind of flowed for you guys since I'm doing it on my own here. So with that being said, I'm gonna put the camera down and have it face me. Hopefully you all can see me. I'm doing all this in my garage by myself. I'm not a videographer. I just like to give you guys some uh, information on how I do stuff. Just a dude in his garage that likes to work on his Jeep. So um, here we go. And what we're gonna do here is hook up the chuck here. We're gonna screw it down uh, like I showed you. I do this part first without everything hooked up because uh, with the, the nitrogen tank, it has a holder and everything, but with the tank and the hose and everything like that, it's kind of like, I don't wanna drop it. It's kind of in the way. So I'll hook this part up. We're gonna tighten it down with a wrench, so I finger tight, and then I'm gonna give it a couple little cranks, not anything crazy, I just want it tight enough to not have any leaks when we go ahead and, head and put the nitrogen through. Um, so let's give it a little bit of a snugness, and make sure it's not gonna move, and make sure we're not gonna get any leaks on it. It doesn't need to be crazy, you don't need to go He-Man on it. This is one of those, this is one of those things that you don't He-Man tighten. Here is our power tank nitrogen setup. So this is the nitrogen bottle regulator and then this would be our inflator. This is what I also use the, to check the shocks or anything um, if needed. We actually used my buddy's kit in uh, Moab for somebody. Our, our friend needed to charge his hydraulic bump. So these come in handy. I know the price seems a little steep at first, but if you are serious about your Jeep or your off-road vehicle and making sure you have proper uh, charge in your shocks, this is a kit you need to have. Um, I can't tell you how many shocks I've checked that came from a factory or came from a manufacturer or came from the shock manufacturer themselves and the charge was not where it was supposed to be. So I don't know in sitting on the shelf or in transit or who knows what, uh, they lose charge. So they need to be checked. Uh, I would probably check any high-end shock. I would almost check every single one unless you had it specifically built like right for you right before. I would wanna check the nitrogen on it. Um, pretty much everyone I know that's put on some sort of coilover or aftermarket shock has had to adjust or add nitrogen to their shocks. Uh, typically they're not overcharged, they would be undercharged. So it's gonna affect the performance and if you have uh, shocks at different charges on all four corners, it's definitely gonna affect the performance and your vehicle is not going to handle the way you want it to or perform the way you want it to. We spend a lot of money on these coilover setups. We should make sure that they are um, accurate and done right and you know these things require touches. This is one of those things you need to do to um, just kind of stay on top of your setup. So enough of me ranting and rambling about that. That's my two cents on it. Now you know. So we're gonna hook the uh, nitrogen system up. Um, it's nice and tight. And then we are going to twist the valve that I showed you there uh, on, the, on the chuck and we're gonna push the Schrader valve down. So now we have, it'll tell us our charge here and it'll also allow us to put nitrogen in if we needed to. If we needed to take nitrogen out, we would just disconnect this from here, open up the valve like we would like we would to charge it, but it would just allow it to release itself. We have pressure here, so it's gonna force it in. So let's go ahead and decomp or compress the Schrader valve down here. And as I told you before, I did this once. Uh, this is my second take on the video. I just wanted it to make a little bit more sense. So we're down below 50 PSI. I was actually at 50 originally, so I had one hydraulic bump at 100 and one hydraulic bump at 50. It's one of those things I overlooked. I had so many other things going on with the build that those were kind of 
not high priority for me, but now I'm starting to get everything dialed with the suspension. Um, next I'll be on spring rates and things like that, but for now we're just getting all the other stuff fine-tuned. So here's what we're gonna do to allow uh, nitrogen charge in here is we're just gonna twist this knob and it is going, to, you're gonna see that red, see how quickly it moves? I'm already at uh, 75, we're at 100. We're still cooking, we're gonna get up to 150. Back it off, just under 150. I'm just gonna go over just a smidge because when we um, when we take this off, there's still some charge in the line. I, I wanna make sure I'm at 150, not below. So I'm at like just below 150. Tiny little hit right there, boom. Okay, so we're just above 150 right now, like 155, um, which should be fine because I think I did the, the other side at the same. So now that we've done that, we've closed this off, we are going to now let the pressure off the Schrader valve. So we're basically gonna open that back up so that it's now sealing itself. The valve is coming, Schrader valve is coming back up and the shock is basically closed for business. We're not gonna be able to put anything in or take anything out unless we press that again. So now that that's done, I'm gonna release the tank. You're gonna hear probably a little bit of what's in the line come out of the nitrogen. So you heard that pressure from the nitrogen release. And that's it. The shock is charged. We'll, we'll remove the, or the hydraulic bump is charged. We'll remove the chuck. And now I have matching hydraulic bump pressures. I already know the shocks are good because I did all those when I did installation. Um, so definitely something I recommend uh, people keep on top of. And as I said, the power tank system is hands down the best setup you can get. It has everything you need all in one nice container. Um, and uh, if you have, again, coilovers, uh, ORIs, uh, a really nice high-end regular shock that you're using your Jeep off-road, you're gonna have to check your, your pressures at least once a year, probably more than that if you're doing some serious off-roading. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and uh, I'll continue producing videos for you guys. Thank you.